Android phones are broken, watch out. And Windows 11 also broken and AMD also broken. It's a, it's a bad news episode, guys. That's what we're bringing to you with today's episode of Hot News. I'm gonna go over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, March 20th, 2023. And just, just buckle in. I think I've got like one or two positive things to talk to you about, but for the most part, things are bad in the tech world right now. But before we get into the bad news, I wanna give you really good news. We're giving away this monster of a PC, 7950X 3D. It's got a 7900 XTX in the H9 flow from NZXT. It's also got the NZXT Kraken Z73 with the NZXT C1200 watt power supply. It's a mighty fine system. We're giving it away. You can come watch us over on Twitch on our live streams. That's how you get points to be entered in order to win this PC. Would love to have you over there. Good news before we get into all of the bad. We're going to start off today talking about a very severe vulnerability with regards to different Android devices. Google and their Project Zero program, which finds out different vulnerabilities that might be involved in Android phones and otherwise, discovered that yeah, these things are hackable if you're on a Samsung Exynos chip, which normally isn't a huge deal because a hackable device is pretty normal. Everything can be manipulated somewhat, except for the fact that the vulnerability only requires that they have your phone number and they can do it by hacking you remotely. Project Zero released 18 different zero day vulnerabilities, but they believe that this one is incredibly severe, saying due to a very rare combination of level of access these vulnerabilities provide and the speed with which which we believe a reliable operational exploit could be crafted, we have decided to make a policy exception to delay disclosure for the four vulnerabilities that allow for internet to baseband remote code execution. So they just need an internet and your phone number and they can hack your phone and have access to essentially everything that's on it. So this is applying to a ton of different phones, the Galaxy S22, all of the other Samsung devices that you see on the screen, the Pixel 6 and 7, which also had Exynos chips and a few others. So this has already been updated to be fixed in Pixel 6 and Pixel 7 devices. There's no word yet from Samsung as to whether or not they're gonna be updating this. But in case you don't have a Pixel 6 or 7 that has been updated and you're on one of the vulnerable chipsets, Google says that you need to turn off Wi-Fi calling or voice over LTE, saying until security updates are available, users who wish to protect themselves from the baseband remote code execution vulnerabilities in Samsung's Exynos chipsets can turn off Wi-Fi calling and voice over LTE in their device settings. Turning off these settings will remove the exploitation risk of these vulnerabilities. However, there are some reports that you might not be able to turn off voice over LTE on specific Exynos devices. It's not quite clear, but in case you are on one of these, you really need to watch out. Make sure that you have this turned off. Get updated as soon as possible. Security exploits, not good. But thankfully, it doesn't apply to the S23, which we're going to talk about with today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Anchor and their new 312 and 313 chargers, because especially with the launch of the new Samsung Galaxy devices, you're gonna need a new charger if you wanna charge these things at full speed. And that's exactly what the 313 can do. It has 45 watt peak charging to allow you to get the super fast charging 2.0 that the S23 Plus and Ultra come with, which will allow you to fully charge your phone in under an hour. And it's powered by GAN technology, leading to higher energy efficiency, making sure that the heat dissipation is better. It also has the multi-protect technology to make sure your Samsung Galaxy is protected with 10 layers of protection as well as over voltage current regulation and over temperature protection. And the charger with its foldable design is actually 30% smaller than Samsung's 45 watt original charger, which they don't include in the box anymore. But the cable that's actually included in the box is not capable of delivering the super fast charging 2.0 at 45 watts. So you have to make sure that you pick up a cable that can deliver the 45 watts in order to get that super fast charging 2.0. But if you have the 313 charger, you're gonna be able to power your S23 Ultra as fast as you possibly can. They also have the 312 charger, which allows for up to 25 watt peaks, which is great for the latest S23, whereas the 313 is gonna be more suited for the higher end S23 Plus and Ultra. But it also has all of the protection features of multi-protect technology. It's 23% smaller than Samsung's original 25 watt charger, and it's compatible with tons of mobile devices. So if you're looking to power any of your new Samsung S23 devices, check out Anchor at the link in the video description. The 313 for 45 watts, the 312 for 25 watts. Great products, check them out down below in the description. Big thanks again to Anchor 
Anchor for sponsoring today's video. So the vulnerability in the Exynos chipsets, the first bad news that I had for you. And the next bad news is that if you're on a Pixel device, the Pixel markup is vulnerable as well. It turns out that any modifications that you make to it could be unmodified on people getting your image, specifically if you upload it to various different social media sites. So somebody found out when you upload marked up photos to various social media platforms, it can then be downloaded and recovered in the original form. So you see this Discord message over here was covered up over the credit card number and then the recovered image found out that there was the actual numbers underneath. However, it comes with a few interesting pieces. The top 20% of the image is gonna be corrupted. So if that's where you marked it up, then you're totally fine. But the rest of the 80% of the screenshot is still messed up. Currently, this does not apply to the photos uploaded everywhere because of how different social media websites use compression or do different things with screenshots. But the most compromised one as of right now is Discord. There's no update on when Discord might be updating things to fix it. However, the technical explanation of how this is happening is the way that the Pixel device is actually saving the image. It's not cropping out the majority of the original file. Instead, it's like saving the new file on top of the old one, which allows the original to then be exploited. It's it's a bad time. Don't be posting sensitive things where you're cropping out. The whole point of like marking things up like that is that you're trying to remove sensitive information. This is bad. The Pixel update should hopefully be fixing it and you should be good to go sometime soon. But Windows 11 also having significant issues with slow SSDs, Wi-Fi connections, blue screens of death. Turns out that the Windows 11 22H2 update, the code name Moment 2, is having some problems with specific SSDs having really slow boot up speeds. It's not quite clear why, but various A-data SSDs are having issues. Additionally, there's blue screens of death that are plaguing this update, slower Wi-Fi connections, and if you're experiencing any of this, the current recommendation is that you roll on back to the previous update before 22H2. Now I'm gonna roll on back to Reese because he's from the past. He, 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 he no longer is with me in the present. That sounds like he's dead. He's not, he's just... Thanks, Reese. You know it's not gonna be featured on your deals? EK Water Blocks, because they have announced that they're gonna be raising the price of all of their products 8%. Told you, bad news today, starting in April, discussing things like raw material sourcing difficulties, material prices, labor costs. They are raising prices on a selected range of their products, 8% on average, and all orders placed before March 31st, 2023 will not be affected by the price adjustments. So if you're planning a water cooling build, any sort of parts that you needed, you might want to get it done within the next two weeks before the price hike happens on April 1st. But now let's talk about a good piece of news before we get into more bad. Asus announcing that they have beta BIOS updates to support the 24 and 48 gig sticks that you can now find out there. We knew this was coming and now it's officially here. Update your motherboards in case you wanted to have 192 gigabytes of RAM. But now bad news for AMD. It turns out that there's a bug where it says the 7950X is hitting 6.3 gigahertz because of a real-time clock reporting bug that's just saying that your CPU is running faster than it is. It's not running that fast, but your CPU is still really fast. If you want to see how fast the 7950X is, you can check out the video that we released on Saturday about how, oh, I forgot to talk about I'm giving away this PC. Yeah, the 7950X 3D. We're giving that away. And if you saw me talk about this at the beginning of the video, it's because I remembered after the fact, and then I'm going to record the intro later now to have Catlin put it in at the beginning. Time. And now for the second piece of good news that we have today, and that is the 780M integrated GPU from AMD has been benchmarked even more. We're finding that it's it's really fast. It's getting very, very close to some of the discrete GPUs that are still being sold in laptops today. So benchmarks coming out showing that the 780M is between a 1650 Ti and a 1650 Max-Q in laptops. So you can see right here, it is faster than the 1650 Max-Q. It is faster than a 980 Ti. It's a little bit slower slower than a Titan X, it's slower than the 1650 desktop and slower than the 1650 Ti laptop, but that is really fast for an integrated GPU. This has me really excited for what AMD is gonna be bringing out with this next series of mobile chips. They're supposed to be wicked fast. The 780M gonna be a top dog in performance. I am very, very excited for this. And we've got some more CPU details with the 7840U, which is their low powered version of their Phoenix mobile chips. Coming in at only 28 watts, beats the fastest chip AMD had last generation. It beats out the 6980HX, even though it only goes up to 28 watts of performance, whereas the AMD chip from last generation was a lot more. So you see right here, the 
CPU, beating the 6980H X, getting uh, within spitting distance of the 12700H. That is wild that AMD is putting up these numbers on a very low powered performer. And we find that the GPU is also really good. It's just, it has the 780M. It has eight cores that are at 28 watts. This is, this is insane what AMD is bringing to the mobile market and really outmaneuvering what Intel's been doing with the integrated graphics on their mobile processors. This is gonna make things like the handhelds incredible. I can't wait for an INEO 3 that's running a 780M or any of the other handhelds that are gonna be bringing it out or even a laptop. You, you'd be able to do so much with this, too bad. Here's the bad news part of all of this. It's delayed. You're not getting it as soon as you thought you were. AMD officially confirming to a non-tech that the Phoenix APUs, which were originally supposed to release in March, are getting delayed until April. You have to wait. No official release date at this point saying to align with platform readiness, ensure the best possible user experience. We now expect our OEM partners to launch the first notebooks powered by the Ryzen 7040HS series processors in April. So this is their Phoenix range chips, not dropping until April of 2023. The 780M has to wait. AMD is giving us the best, just not right now. Awesome, just like the 7800X3D, supposed to launch in February, didn't launch that all yet. I'm a little spent. I'm a little spent from this episode of Hot News. A lot of bad news. Hopefully we'll have more positive stuff for you tomorrow. But until then, keep your news warm on the burrito warmer. Don't forget we're giving away this PC. Come watch us over on Twitch. That's the good news. That's the best news of today's episode.